Did you understand? <laughs> what are you both doing in here? Well, I'm riding a bike and she's baking a cake. Mm. Janice, he knows what I mean. Tell him. Tell him what? I don't know what you're on about. Bookie Roo. No, thanks, but I'll have a game of underwater twister if you go first. <laughs> Mr Roo said to meet him in reception at 11 o'clock. It's only half ten. Oh, come on. Put on a pair of long trousers and get a shave. Uh, do you mind? That's my wife you're talking to. Just calm down, Mother. He can come up here and talk to us. You're going to show me up. I knew you would. This man's come all the way from America. So walking here from reception won't seem that long a journey. Leave him a message to meet us here. I will. And when he tells us all about this inheritance, you lot can go whistle for it. There is no inheritance. When will you listen? It's all a scam. How can it be a scam? You met him for yourself last night. He's a top American lawyer. I met him for 30 seconds. He could be a dustman from Wigan. He's got an American accent. Yeah, so did my Uncle Wally. He also kept ferrets down his trousers and used to bark at traffic. Hey! Hang on! I've said nothing, Mother! Uh, oh, why'd you have to wind her up? What else is there to do? Hmm? It's not actually a smoking room and there's no balcony, but if you just hang your head out the window and make sure that your tab ends don't fall in the pool, everything'll be hunky dory. <laughs> Uh, Leslie, this booking for two nights, Mr. Buck A. Roo, he arrived late last night. You didn't check him in, did you? No. Why? <laughs> you don't think there's something slightly odd? How do you mean? What's the name? Mr. Buck A. Roo. Buckaroo. What sort of name is that? Well, it is unusual, but I've got an Irish auntie and she's called Patty O'Dores. <laughs> I mean, it's just a look of the draw, isn't it? I look on the notes. We'll not be staying second night. Room is to freshen up only. No, that is strange. Why pay for an extra night when you can just have a lick and a promise in the box? Well, I wasn't going to put it quite like that, but yes, exactly. Uh, excuse me, can I get a replacement key for room 601, please? No problem. Do something about your hair. Oh. Cheeky cow. There's nothing wrong with my hair, young one, is there? Yeah, it's better than mine, mate. I'm getting a very strong sense of a woman in a past life with the letter B. So, how many times have I told you I'm not into all that stuff? A very tall, overpowering woman with, with big hair and a cleavage that could stop traffic. No. Oh, she's trying so hard to come through. She's saying, it's time for you to sort out those photos in, in that shoebox covered in wallpaper. I don't know any tall, dead women with big hair and even bigger cleavage, and I don't have any photos in a shoebox. Now, what do you think of them nails? Oh, they're lovely. <laughs> Can I pay at the end of the week? As usual. <laughs> now, think about what I said. It might come to you. The great psychic Sue is never wrong. Thanks, Sue. See you at the end of the week. <laughs> See you, Kevin. See you, love. Oh. Honestly, can you believe some people are actually taken in by that rubbish? That woman she was describing. It's me mother, Brenda. The letter B. Oh, it's probably just a lucky guess. And what about the photos? Well, that's even easier. She was sitting there watching you, looking at your photos. Oh, yeah. How do you explain this, then? Oh. 